Hello, thanks for tuning in to the Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast. I'm Rebecca Wilhelm. I'm Mary Quigley. And I'm Hope Wilhelm. Join us as we dive into the spookier side of the Hoosier State. So what comes to your mind when you think of Indiana? Do you think of corn? Do you think of basketball? Do you think of the Indianapolis 500? Maybe you think of famous celebrities who were born in Indiana, like John Mellencamp or Michael Jackson. But as the saying goes, there is more than corn in Indiana. 92 counties make up the Hoosier State. In this podcast, we are going to discuss some Indiana folklore from each of these counties. If you are into tall tales, ghosts, or spooky legends, then this is a podcast you are not going to want to miss. In this episode, we are going to discuss a legend from Knox County, Indiana. So Indiana has many legends of animals that are not really animals at all. Many of these legends go back to the Native American times. And these creatures are known by many different names, but they all share one thing in common. Legend claims that these animals are said to be men that can change into any animal at all. In Old Vincennes, the French settlers and the fur traders had a name for one of these creatures. In this episode, we are going to discuss the legend of the Lou Guru. <laughs> Researching this episode, I had not heard about the Lou Guru. The first time that I heard about the Lou Guru was during my folklore class at Indiana State. I googled the Lou Guru. It says that Lou is French for wolf and Guru means werewolf. So the Lou Guru is a werewolf. Correct. Many areas around the world have legends of the Lou Guru. And these legends all seem to come from areas that have a lot of French history. The Lou Guru is more than just a werewolf, though. This creature is said to have the body of a man but the head of a wolf. In Ronald Baker's book, Hoosier Folklore Legends, one legend specifically mentions the Lou Guru by name. Yes, this legend mentioned occurred in Old Vincennes. It mentions this occurred in the area where the hospital is located today. Baker's version of the tale mentions a man by the name of Charles Vachet. No date or year is given in Baker's version of the story. The only hint is that this took place before the invention of streetlights. Baker's legend of the tale claims that one evening, Mr. Vatchett made a decision to cut through the cemetery late one evening. So picture this guy walking through a cemetery. It's dark, no lights. Suddenly an animal jumps out at him. At first, he thinks that it is a wolf. When he looks closer, he realizes that the wolf has a man's body. Mr. Vatchett is carrying a knife, which he uses to cut the animal in self-defense. As soon as Vatchett's knife makes contact with this animal... Suddenly, the animal is not an animal at all. Baker's account gets even stranger. According to his version of the legend, the man speaks to Vatchett and tells him that he is from Evansville. I can't imagine the tale being stranger than a man that can shapeshift from a werewolf to a man and speak. You would think that, but it does get stranger. Well, apparently, Mr. Vatchett claims that the man told him he had been cursed and changed into the werewolf creature. Cursed? Yes, even stranger is that the creature man tells Mr. Vatchett not to tell anyone for one year. He told Vatchett that if the tale was told before the year was up, he would turn back into the werewolf creature. Being cut with a knife ended the spell then? That is the claim. According to Ronald Baker in his 1989 manuscript, French Folklore and Old Vincennes, the Lou Guru was cursed and put under a spell that would last 101 days. Making the animal bleed was the only way to break the spell. 
Something else interesting is that they could not talk about the spell once it had been broken. Right. Because if it was spoken about, then both parties would become permanently cursed. And according to Ronald Baker, they could not even mention it to each other. For if they did, then both men would permanently become the Loop Guru. It's such an interesting legend. Something else I found out when we were Googling about the Loop Guru legend is that it is not always just a werewolf. Correct. The French settlers called any type of shape-shifting animal by that name. Yes, there are many stories of the Lugaru being able to change into other kinds of animals, and you will find that some claim it can turn into a horse or a cow or even some type of bird that could fly away. This makes the Indiana Lugaru way different from other legends you read about. While we were researching this story, we came upon so many stories that go back many decades. Well, one of the websites that we stumbled upon that I have absolutely fallen in love with is called The Legends Tall Tales, an interactive casebook for Knox County, Indiana. Yes, that's a great resource. It really is. And there are many interesting tales on that website. Something else that I find interesting is that many people believe that the Lou Guru stayed a regular man during the day. So he would go about his business during the day and no one was the wiser? That's what many believe. The man would change by either a curse or by his own free will. The Lou Guru only came out at night. On the Tall Tales website, it has a collection of stories from old Vincennes that was collected in the 1920s. These stories were collected by Miss Anna C. O'Flynn, who was a Vincennes school teacher. Yes, Miss O'Flynn taught school in the French section. And she collected these tales that she heard, and this website has posted them. We will post a link to the website in our source notes. We would like to share one of the stories from the Folklore Legends and Tall Tales website that was collected by Miss O'Flynn. This legend is about a Lugaru that appeared as a big black dog. So the story is told by a Vincennes man by the name of Pepe Boucher, and it begins with a man named Charlie Page who is out one evening for a stroll. And the time period is back when the Native Americans were in Vincennes. The Native Americans knew Paige very well. They respected Paige and got along pretty well with him, according to Boucher. As the story says, Charlie Page was a man who, quote, was a daredevil kind of man who who hunted in the woods and feared nothing. Paige was also well known for carrying a big knife with him everywhere he went. The knife was very specific and unlike other knives of its time. It had a spring load that enabled Paige to whip this out quickly if needed. Along his evening walk, a large black dog appeared before Paige. This animal is unlike any other animal that Boucher has encountered. First of all, most animals get out of Paige's way. This one does not. It snarls and growls at Boucher. Instantly, the dog leaps to attack Paige by going for his throat. Man and beast struggle. Page begins to think of the stories of the Lugaru. Page realizes that if this is a true Lugaru, the only thing that can save him is to make the Lugaru bleed. Page takes out his trusty knife and uses the spring mechanism to take it out quickly. He plunges the knife into the dog, which causes it to release its hold on Page at once. Instantly, the dog disappears into a cloud of flames and smoke before Page's eyes. And when the flames and smoke are gone, What is standing before Paige is not a dog at all. Standing before him is his best friend, a man by the name of Jean Vettel. The men stand and look at one another and do not speak a word. According to Boucher, Vettel goes home and doctors his arm by himself. Of course, he cannot go to a real doctor. Questions may be asked and he can't speak of this incident to anyone, at least not for 101 days. Boucher ends the story by telling how Vital is a much richer man than Page is. To thank Page for delivering him from the Lugaru curse, he gives Page a horse and a cow. The men do not tell this tale for 101 days. Strangely, Boucher ends the tale with an explanation of the length of time the curse will last. And Boucher tells that the curse could last, quote, a year and a day, sometimes a week and a day, or it be 101 days. He goes on to say that no matter the length there is, always the extra one day that is added to the curse. Wow, that's crazy. So if you find yourself walking alone through Vincennes and you happen upon a strange animal in your path, 
you may just want to keep an eye out. Just remember that you may come face to face with a legend from another place and time. The Lugaroo. Have you ever had an experience with something you believe could be the Lugaroo? Are there some legends about the Lugaroo that we missed? We would love to hear about it. Please send us an email to who's your missing legends at gmail.com. We may use it in a later episode. In the email, let us know if you wish to remain anonymous. To see our source material, please visit our website, whosyourmissinglegends.com. Please find us and follow us on Facebook or on Instagram. Our theme song was written and recorded by Wet Blanket. The song title is Taxidermy Race Car. Wet Blanket is frontman Joseph Carpenter, lead guitar Earl Wilhelm, rhythm guitar Joshua Carpenter, bass Parker Warman, and drums Christian Kittle. Thank you to all of our listeners for sticking with us. So sorry about the late posting of this episode. But we have all had a lot going on in our lives. My husband and my son have been dealing with some health issues that have kept me from writing as much as I would like to. I have moved into a new apartment and started a new job. I've been busy with being back to school and cheerleading. We appreciate all of the support we have received on our social media pages. If you like what you hear, please don't forget to give us a five-star rating on whatever podcast platform you are listening to us through. Your comments and likes help others find us. Thank you for tuning in to the Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast. As always, stay spooky.